ओके सो वेलकम टू फिजिक्स लाइफ विद अंगन भट्टाचार्य वन सेकेंड एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द लैटिस वाइब्रेशन व्हिच इज़ अ पार्ट ऑफ द कंडेंस मैटर फिजिक्स और सॉलिड स्टेट फिजिक्स वट यू मे कॉल सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लेट अस इंट्रोड्यूस द नेम ऑफ द लेक्चर लैटिस वाइब्रेशन ओके सो नाउ द थिंग इज दैट वी नो ऑल अबाउट द वाइब्रेशन and as it is constituted to or related to the crystal lattice it is termed as the lattice vibration now for considering the lattice vibration we what we are wanting to describe is the vibration constituting the lattice points or the in crystal you are known to the fact that some lattice and bases are present so some bases are uh, put into the lattice points inside the crystal and it's constitute the total crystal so the vibration corresponding to this atom or the bases placed at this lattice point is related to the lattice vibration now the thing is that for discussing the lattice vibration we have to consider some of the assumptions so as to simplify our theory so what are these assumptions that we simply constitute that these lattice points are related to one another with some elastic springs okay so that the vibration if some disturbance is created to one of the particles then it may constitute or it may set into oscillation and with the result of this as it is connected by the elastic spring with the another particle it will also go into the vibration and so on this will also go into the vibration as this will also be connected to the elastic spring this so this way we can imagine the total lattice and the bases to be formed of by the connection of elastic springs and the vibration of any one of the particle may cause the vibration to the rest of the others so this is the first assumption and the second thing as a uh, second thing is that every atom the vibration corresponding to every atom will follow or obey the hooke's law that is the force is directly proportional to the displacement okay and it is known to our uh, simple harmonic motion it is known to the fact that we also know it from the simple harmonic motion that the displacement of the atoms are uh, relating to the simple harmonic motion are related to the hooke's law where it is said that the displacement is sorry the force is directly proportional to the displacement that is a proportional to some displacement if we consider displacement as u then this and if it's some minus of beta u if we consider the spring constant or the force constant to be the beta another name is stiffness constant okay so all of these are some assumption based upon which we develop the theory corresponding to the lattice vibration and it will gives rise to okay it will gives rise to some dynamical property of the lattice okay and the action of these dynamical external forces may be either mechanical or may be electromagnetic in nature okay so because of this type of forces the vibration corresponding to these forces are acoustic and optical respectively we will see in this detail later so let us first describe the one dimensional monatomic one dimensional monatomic monatomic linear lattice vibration let us first introduce this in this case the diagram is very essential by drawing the diagram you can easily uh, explain what the thing is going to happen there so as it is monatomic so only one type of atoms should be present let us characterize the atoms by the mass small m and exactly the identical one 
would also be present. So I have considered some identical atoms which has some uh, same as these are identical and these atoms are connected with each other by some elastic springs which we introduce in our assumptions like this like this. Okay, so if somehow uh, let us mark the positions of them so that it will be better to explain. Let us mark this position to be in this is nth position, this is in plus 1th position, then it is in minus 1th position, and this is in minus 2th position. Okay. So in our position axis, if the lattice parameter be A, which is the interatomic distance, then the nth position may be written as Na. Similarly, this will be the n plus 1 into A. From the distance from the origin, this will be n minus 1 into A and this will be n minus 2 into A. Now let us focus on the innate atom. If we somehow by applying mechanical or electromagnetic forces displace or generate some of the disturbance at innate atom, then it will get displaced from its equilibrium position. Let us imagine that it is displaced to So this is displaced to this position, this is displaced to this, displaced to this, this is displaced to this.
so if we mark the displacement like this this shows the amount of displacement it gain this this so this is un this is un plus 1 that is the displacement corresponding to n plus 1 at atom this displacement due to n minus 1 at displacement that of the u minus sorry n minus 2th so main focus is on the nth so if i am going to write the equation of motion corresponding to this then the equation of motion will be the equation of motion corresponding to corresponding to nth atom is m d2 un d2 un dt2 is equal sum minus of beta this is the force which i am writing on the left hand side and this is the stiffness constant as well as corresponding to the displacement this this is nothing more difficult to understand but here it should be keep in your mind that this is not the actual displacement okay it is the amount of displaced position so that amount of displaced position is solely restricted with or solely related to the associated particles motion so we have to consider these displacements also so the amount of displacement n plus 1 minus un plus un minus 1 minus here it may either be stretch like this and it may stretch like this so the excess displacement in this direction excess displacement in this direction if i am going to separate this by parenthesis this okay so the actual result will be beta of un plus 1 plus un minus 1 minus 2 un it is the catch here which you should have to understand carefully otherwise the whole derivation will not work next the method in which we will solve this equation is the trial method trial and error method and in this method we have to pick a trial solution and let them uh, introduced in our differential equation to make it satisfied so i have considered a uh, trial solution to be un which is equal to some u not exponential some fetch term i omega t minus kx but in this case the x is equal to n a the nth position so k into n a this is the uh, displacement or the solution of the differential equation what we have picked as the trial solution and let it be introduced in the differential equation to make it satisfied so this is the corresponding to nth position similarly you can also write the n plus 1th and n minus 1th all the things will remain same only the change will be n plus 1 into a and all these will be remain same just change in k minus 1 into a the rest of the things you have to write but i am not at all going to write it after considering all these trial solutions you have to substitute these on the equation number 1 
so if you incorporate these in equation number one you will be able to obtain m minus m omega square is equal sum beta into e to the power i k a plus e to the power minus i k a minus 2 how you have to differentiate u n with respect to t then i omega will uh, coming out from this and the rest of the things will remain same then again you have to differentiate the d u n d t with respect to d t so that another i omega will come in front of this and the previous one gets multiplied with it and resulting in minus omega square and m is present here so m is also present here now the thing is that you have to cancel these exponential term with this from these two sides left hand side and right hand side so only the excess term will be present e to the power i k e to the power minus i k just you can see here and there is two present so there is two is also present the rest of the things will get cancelled out from the both side so this is nothing more critical calculation and you can do this on your own but the important thing is that you can modify this exponential term as beta taking 2 as common and if we take the 2 as common e to the power i k plus e to the power minus i k divided by 2 minus 1 which results okay so another way of writing this is the whole square process in this way you can also do the same thing but this is more uh, helpful to understand so it can be expressed as this make sure that e to the power ik gives out just see yes okay similarly you can also write this ik by 2 whole square of this quantity minus 2 of e to the power ik by 2 into e to the power minus ik by 2 make sure that these two expression equivalent yes it is so you can write from here beta into e to the power ik by 2 plus e to the power minus i k by 2 whole square ok now you can write from here that this is nothing but if you take 4 beta then you can place the 2 inside the square bracket e to the power i k by 2 e to the power minus i k by 2 whole square this will give rise to 4 beta cos of um, sorry there is some minus is present no? minus this was minus so a minus b whole square so this gives rise to sine k by 2 but the thing is that here 2i should be present so i square means minus minus sine square k by 2 this so the actual equation from here becomes minus a omega square minus 4 beta sine square k divided by 2 minus 2 minus cancel and omega becomes root over 4 beta by m sin k by 2 plus minus now the plus minus only depends on the value of the sign so you can also write the root over 4 beta divided by m modulus of sine k a divided by 2 okay so make it as equation number 2 okay this is a very crucial relation which relates omega with the k it is called omega k relation 
so you can put it in a box now let us uh, take the equation in another form suppose c be the longitudinal stiffness and stiffness and rho is the mass per unit length then you can write c to be equal to force constant or stiffness constant into the lattice parameter and rho can be considered as m by l or a here a is the lattice parameter so this so make substitution of beta and m with c and rho so that you will be able to get omega is equal to root over of 4 c by a m means rho into a so sine of k by 2 so 4 2 and 2 by a root over c by rho c by rho sign k by 2 now this term you can write as vt or vs which is the velocity of sound in solid Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. So, Vs I have introduced as the velocity of sound or velocity of the vibration in solid. You can write velocity of sound in solid. Okay. Now, since the omega is always positive as you can see the magnitude solely depends on the sin k by 2 uh, we can write omega is equal some 2 by a vs mod of sin k by 2 this gives rise to the omega and k relation between omega and k either you can consider this three number equation or you can consider also the two number equation these are known as the dispersion relation so these are the known as these are known as the dispersion relation which is very much essential to study why dispersion relation what is the uh, significance of the dispersion relation as because it gives the idea how the velocity of the vibration depends on the frequency of the vibration it gives a relationship between the velocity of vibration with the frequency thus different frequency will have different velocity corresponding to the vibration and depending upon the omega and v we can establish a relationship which shows the dependence between the two quantity okay 
Now let us consider some special cases. Special cases. The first one is at very low frequency. Low frequency means nu tends to zero. Sorry. Nu I have considered the angular frequency, so omega tends to zero. So omega tends to zero. So in this case, if omega tends to zero, then uh, sine k by two also tends to zero. It means that sine k by two is very small. In this case, we can also approximate sine k by two or sine theta to be equal to theta. That is sine k by two is k by two. and you can place it and here and you can be able to obtain omega is equal to 2 by a vs k a by 2 so cancelling 2 a we get omega is equal vs into k this shows the linear dependence of omega with the propagation constant k okay so now we can introduce the terms of phase velocity and group velocity associated with the vibration you are known to the fact that the phase velocity may be defined as the rate of the rate of the advancement of the point of constant phase along with the direction of propagation k so the velocity is uh, corresponding to phase velocity is given by omega by k which is nothing but equal to vs in this case okay and the groove velocity corresponding to the vibration is defined as the rate of small rate of change of frequency with the direction of propagation that is d omega dk which can also be defined as limit delta k tends to 0 delta omega delta k okay so omega by k vp again vp is equal so this is vg again vp is equal this limit if you consider delta k tends to 0 this will be the case like this where k tends to 0 was taken so that we can say sin theta is nearly about 2 theta so this is nothing but delta omega delta k there is nothing but d omega dk and this is nothing but the groove velocity so at the low frequency region the phase velocity vp and the groove velocity vg are equal this has the great physical significance exactly similar result is obtained in a homogeneous and continuous line it therefore follows that the for long wavelength the atomic nature of the solid is of little importance as far as the dynamical property of the system are concerned this is apparently due to the insensitiveness of the discrete medium of the waves the discrete system we have considered here due to the insensitiveness of the discrete medium to the wave the long wavelengths corresponds to the low frequency and this will result to the fact that phase velocity is equal to the groove velocity now we consider the case at higher frequency at higher frequency at a higher velocity uh, higher frequency the phase velocity and group velocity will not be equal that is vp will be uh, omega by k 
simple now from 3 we can get omega by k that is 2 vs upon a k sine of a k by 2 and vg will be d omega dk ok so d omega dk if we derive uh, take the derivative of omega with respect to k we will be able to obtain 2 vs by a sin cos a k by 2 and 2 by a so this gets cancelled out and will result vs cos of a k by 2 this so you can see from this that the phase velocity and the groove velocity are not equal to each other okay thus both vp and vg are function of the frequency vp and vg are the function of frequency this is referred to as the phenomenon of dispersion okay now for the maximum frequency maximum frequency frequency from 3 the frequency will be maximum at which condition when sin k by 2 is 1 sin can take the maximum value of 1 so when sin k by 2 becomes 1 then only omega will be maximum and its value will be 2 vs upon a or root over 4 beta by m as from the equation number 2 root over 4 beta by m since sin k by 2 is 1 ok so this is the maximum frequency along which any vibration may proceed this results to the fact that sin k by 2 is equal to 1 is equal sine pi by 2 if we compare these and these we can be able to obtain k by 2 pi by 2 2 2 gets cancelled out and k will be pi by a so putting the value of a as pi by k we can also able to obtain omega max to be 2 vs upon pi a is equal pi by k so pi by k uh, so a is equal pi by k ok this so the phase velocity vp will be omega in this case omega by k omega max by k so 2 vs by pi ok and vg will be what can you guess vg will be 0 if you take the derivative with respect to k there is no k dependency term although here we can make the substitution as this but this is not uh, the inherent process phase velocity in this case if you take the d omega dk as 2 vs by pi then phase velocity will be equal to group velocity which is not possible because delta k is not tends to 0 in this case so vg will be 0 for this